Okay, here we are again at the Small Arms Review Show in York, Pennsylvania, machine gun show, and uh, we're going to look at some, uh, a bunch of machine guns here, okay? I don't know what they all are, but uh, in, in uh, as much as I know what they are, I'll uh, kind of narrate. These are actually semi-automatic and bolt-action rifles that just happen to be here. They're not machine guns. Uh, this is, uh, we've got some interesting exotic kind of weapons right here. We've got some Johnson rifles over on the side. We've got some M1 carbines, uh, M1 Garand rifles here. All right. We got some Ruger rifles, very fine quality single shot. Uh, some other pieces, I don't all recognize them all. Most of these are machine guns because this particular vendor is a licensed machine gun dealer or a National Firearms Act NFA weapons dealer. So uh, that's what most of these are. Those are what I call AK types over there, AK 47 derivatives. And some of them may be semi-automatic, I'm not sure without looking in detail. He's got some nice handguns, we'll look at those. There's a shoulder stock Browning high power, I recognize that. Lugers, more Brownings. Various types of uh, automatic pistols. Nice high standard down here. There's a uh, universal carbine enforcer. That would be a machine gun also. Kind of an interesting uh, foreign derivative pistol here. I think that's uh, originally uh, Russian design. VZ-61, okay, that's called a VZ-61. There's a good old 1911 45 caliber. There's a German, looks like an MP-40. Uh, it's only $14,000, but it's transferable and registered and a rare historic weapon. There's some Mac type weapons here. Some, uh, they look like silenced uh, Ruger pistols there. That one's a Ruger. This one's another brand. Now here we get into uh, some nice machine guns. This is Japanese. I recognize that. World War II type. Uh, it's a Type 96, it looks like. This is an MG40, it's called. Don't know much about it. There's a Russian PPSH. 41. Here are some silent semi auto 22 rifles, it looks like to me. How many mags? This is a Spitfire in 45 ACP caliber. Tag on this says M76. And here's an Ingram. A couple of Ingrams, it looks like. Model 6 or M6. Kind of an unusual looking submachine gun here. And this looks like a Sten. British World War II. Now we have a few Risings here. We have several Rising machine guns. This is a World War II era. Uh, machine gun, submachine gun, used by the uh, Marine Corps to some extent. 45 ACP caliber. And here, uh, three Thompsons in a row. That one I would call a shooter just because it's, uh, you know, seen a, a little bit of abuse there as far as the moisture and so forth. Here's a 1928A1, the sign says. I believe it. I don't know any better. And here's an M1A1. A Savage. In pretty nice shape for $18,000. And you can buy these if you comply with all the federal and uh, state and local regulations. In most jurisdictions, there are, there are many where you can't own a machine gun. Uh, particularly in the Northeast and California, you can't own a machine gun. There's a 50 caliber bolt action rifle for a little planking or varmint hunting. Big varmints. A Browning uh, machine gun. 1919 air-cooled. Nice weapon. 
And here's an Inland M2 carbine. Right. And then we got some military type or police type shotguns. And that's about all they have in the way of. Uh, you got the Thompsons and then the Risings and uh, Ingrams. He's got them all laid out categorically here. Here's the Spitfire. Silence 22s. And then. Uh, these military type weapons here.